What is it you want, Barry? What do you want? You, you want the moon? Just say the word and I'll throw a lasso around it and pull it down. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, dying times here. Come with me if you want to live. That's it, man. Game over, man. Game over. The Force will be with you. Always. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to 20th Century Geek. And I'm going to do a special opening today for something special. Standing in the red corner is the Brahma Bull, the John Bull, the British Beef, Scott Weatherly. And on the other side is Maximilian. Takes it to the Max, Max Byrne. Max, how are you doing? You all right? <laughs> all the better after that intro. What a wonderful billing. I just hope I live up to it. I am fantastic, Scott. How about you, sir? I'm not too bad. I'm good, mate. I'm very, very good. You know, getting excited for Christmas. It's that time of year. And mm. uh, um, we were, you and I, we had a bit of an early, early Christmas present, a bit of a gift. Um, Sylvester Stallone gave us an early gift this year. And we're going to be talking about uh, the recutting, the re editing, the director's cut. Um, of Rocky IV, or now branded Rocky versus Drago. Um, first thing, it's weird calling it the director's cut because it's clear that the original cut, the theatrical cut, is also the director's cut um, um, because it was both directed and sort of uh, clearly edited by Sylvester Stallone. Yeah. Um, but let's let's go back before we get to the to the new cut. Rocky IV. Where, where has that been in the sort of the pantheon of, of Rocky films and films in general for you uh, growing up? Right up there. It really has to be, you know, as a, as a child of the 80s, you know, born yeah. October 79, so very much a child of the 80s. It's, I think you can't be someone our age without being a fan of the Rocky franchise, can you really? I mean, and, and at that time, as it, it, I think in terms of commercially speaking, it was or was or maybe still is the most popular of the franchise, isn't it, in terms of what it made? It's not the most critically acclaimed, and, and yeah. rightly so, because, the you know, the, the first is on a different level to it, and I think Rocky Balboa is as well, actually, when the bookend to the, the, Rocky, uh, the Rocky series. But I absolutely adore Rocky IV. I mean, who can't? It's, it's a quintessential 80s gem, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, it comes, you know, it's funny they say in sort of uh, some of the bonus materials and stuff, then it's like, it, it's so 1985, it's un <laughs> unbelievable. Um, yeah, it's that early age of the sort of MTV. It's got like, I mean, it, it is cheesy, you know, it, it sort of, it panders to uh, Cold War propaganda. Um, <laughs> but also, even the soundtrack to this film, like, <sighs> You know, everybody sort of talks about Eye of the Tiger and Gonna Fly Now, which is obviously from the first sort of three films. But this film in itself has got like, yeah. I don't know, seven like awesome songs. Um, so, yeah, it's an absolute gem. Like, you know, it's one of those sort of like, at, at one point I would have said, classed it as a guilty pleasure. But now I just think it's an 80. Like you said, it's just a classic of the 80s. Oh, it is, definitely. It, it really is. It stands up there with anything from the Stallone catalogue, anything from the 80s catalogue, really, yeah. you know. It is just a, a wonderful film. Yes, it's not high art, and it, no. you have to kind of leave, leave your brain at the door when you when you watch it. Um, it's not the deepest of films, although, as we'll get to, I think this new cut adds, certainly adds mm. more depth to the mix. Um, but it is, it's just so entertaining. Sly, Sly's at his absolute height of his career here in terms of like popularity. He looks a million dollars. The film looks a million dollars. Like you said, it sounds a million dollars. Yeah. It's just, it is just great. I could not be a big fan of this film, no, even in no. its original format, let yeah. alone what we've now been treated to. Yeah, and we'll, we'll get to that in a minute because you're right, but that original format, like it's been so um, important to me as a kid, like you say, that sort of the... the the music, you know, the Vince Cola sort of um, the training yeah. montage and, the, and bells, I think it's called the one for the fight at the end. And then um, just all the songs in this, like that, the soundtrack is probably just as popular, if not more so than the film itself. Um, yeah. And, and, you know, obviously the, the big joke and it's, 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 it's ironic really, because everyone takes the Mickey out of it, but they're also the ones that are going to be, motivated by it, is the montages in this film 
<laughs> they are fantastic. You can't. I, I defy anybody to watch this film and at the end of it not want to start running up a hill or like shadow boxing or something of that nature. Yeah. It's, it's just it's inspiring, isn't it? It is like grab you get get the weights out, like dust those weights off. Let's get some weights going on. Come on, let's get some. Uh, you know what they call it, sort of like yeah, clanging and banging of the irons. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, it, it is. It's a, it's the original version of this film is great, and it, you know it introduced um, Dolph Lundgren as well um and sort of you know, it's, it's one of those it's sort of yeah you've got like you said sylvester stallone top of his game in 1985 um introduces us to dolph lundgren who's like six foot five of like and well, in this he's supposed to be russian but he's norwegian or swedish i think he's swedish i think, I think, I think he's swedish yeah swedish yeah, yeah. so he, you know this, this this sort of massive muscle sort of swede who then became he-man um so yeah th- this film is just so 80s and it's so fantastic um and there's a couple of things in it that, like you say, we, we laugh at the montages, we laugh at things, you know, even some of the music. But the one thing that I obviously, all, everyone remembers, and everyone was a little bit um, silly, but is, is the robot. Uh, yes. Let, let's quickly cover off the, ro- the robot. Um, it, it appears in a single, in two scenes, um, which is why I think they were both sort of edited out. Um but it's a gift to Paulie. So Paulie is obviously uh, I haven't given you the I'm not I haven't given the plot for for. If you don't know it, then I don't know what you're listening to a 20th century geek podcast for, to be perfectly honest. <laughs> um but yeah, Paulie gets a, ro- a robot as a present. And at one point it sort of suggested that he has an intimate relationship with it. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, definitely. Um it's kind of dodgy, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it's just the part of I've always, even as a kid, like you know, when you watch it, you're like, this bit's too silly. Like, I'm a little bit, <laughs> I'm a bit, I don't know about you. What were your thoughts on it? Did, you, did, did it ever jump out at you? No, I mean, you know, as we'll, as we'll, we'll crack on with it, Sly, obviously, massively regret putting it in. And, and I think it's just, it's indicative of the time, isn't it? You know, yeah. in, in the film, obviously, Rocky's at the height of his career, he's got huge wealth before. The events of subsequent films see him, you know, lose it all. But here he's a, you know, he's extremely rich. He's a multimillionaire. He's the current reigning world heavyweight champion. He's on top of the world. You know, what when you've got everything, what do you buy your nearest and dearest for the birthday yeah. to show how how well off you are? You buy him a ro- a, a semi sentient robot. <laughs> yeah. um, I, I, it is. It's just indicative of the times, isn't it? It's like it kind is. of a, yeah. a, a rich man's Johnny Five or something like that. Yeah, no, 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 yeah, it's weird to that Johnny Five or sort of like yeah, robots were sort of again were definitely sort of like a an eighties thing, weren't they? There was that sort of, mm. um, yeah, it, it was very yeah, it pushes it into sort of science fiction. Um, but the fact of the matter is, um, you know, um, we the robot is gone. That's one of the things. Um, but do you watch the uh, first before we get to the, sort of the reasons? You did you watch the YouTube documentary? about the why and, and, and going through the, the editing of this film. Most of it, yeah. I haven't mm. said, because it's about an hour and a half long, isn't it? It's, mm. it's, it's as long as the film itself, which is, it is. something, it's quite something. Um, so no, I haven't had the chance to sit through and watch it all. Probably the, probably the only opening half an hour, something okay. like that. Um, but you really, just watching that documentary really does show how much of a, labor of love it was for Stallone wasn't it you know I mean it, and only through cir- co- the circumstances of COVID as well wasn't it you know he, like he said in um when we went to the cinema albeit separately we got this wonderful Q&A with mm. Stallone before the film and he said that it was literally a, a circumstance of, of of COVID of lockdown where he, the film he, what he was doing got shut down so he had time on his hands and nothing to do so obviously he decided well if I can't make a film I'll go and remake a film so to speak recut a film and um, and yeah the process is fascinating isn't it yeah it really was i mean you, you know, i'm glad you said about that because to say it was it's it's you know i don't, I don't want to say a bonus of covid because there's you know it's obviously a, a you know, massive event and a huge tragedy for many people but like mm. yeah it, it's good that like you know this is the kind of guy that stallone is like he seems to be one of those people that sees an opportunity and like, well if i can't do this i'm gonna go do something else like, i can't i'm not gonna sit about yeah, um, uh, you know, and I feel that Stallone 
often gets um, misrepresented. You know, everyone thinks of him and Rocky because obviously, you know, he he, he was it uh, broke he, his jaw. He's got a nerve damage in his jaw from when he was very very mm. young. So he has that slur and all that other stuff. And so people assume yeah. he's thick. You know, they always, anything but. Yeah. Anything but. And exactly, but the guy, like you know, he's written, he's directed, he's an actor, he's a producer. Like the guy just produces stuff. Like he, you know, he's a machine. Yeah. Um. And so it was like, well, if I can't, like you said, if I can't make a film, I'll go and edit a film. And he chose Rocky Four, and I, I love the fact that he was like, yeah, I thought it was going to be like three weeks worth of work, you know, <laughs> like a bit of fun. We'll tighten it up. We'll do this. How long did he say? Was it like nine months? Yeah, between nine to twelve months. He said, yeah. which is it's astonishing. Uh, the, the amount of work because unusually for a, a, a director's cut or a, a, a recall, whatever you want to call it, as well as putting it, it was about 30 minutes of new footage, never before seen footage off the It's 40, back in. 43. It's actually, I, I was, this is one of the things I checked. Right. 43 minutes of unseen footage of new wow. footage. Yeah. But let's not forget, he's almost took the same amount out of the film as well <laughs> yeah. because the running time compared to the theatrical cut is virtually identical. Yeah. So for as much as he put in, he also took out. So that, you know, that in itself just, I guess, kind of doubles the process. Because usually director's cuts, are, they don't take stuff out. It's, it's merely a case of putting extra stuff in, isn't it? You know, extended yeah, cuts, you know, whatever it may be, Snyder Cut or the Lord of the Rings extended cuts. They're not taking anything out. They're adding more to the pot. It's crazy. It, it's always, it's usually, like you say, those scenes where they're like, oh, well, I love this scene, but for time and for this, we, we had to take yeah. it out. So I'm putting it back in. Yeah, <laughs> this yeah, this is like a complete re-edit. Like he's gone back and been like, no, that doesn't work. And and um, <coughs> even with the, the the fight at the end against Drago, one of the things I loved watching. I don't know if you saw this in the documentary uh, as they're going through it. He's judging sort of the angle of like, right, well, Rock is throwing a punch at that angle, but the yeah. fist is coming in at this angle. So can you sort of like, can you? Uh, can you pull in and then we can we rotate it and he's doing stuff to sort of like angle them up and that and yet stuff that i'd never noticed before like you know stuff that like doesn't really hit you as a, as a you know as a viewer like unless you're really you know nitpicking but as obviously as a director and as, a, as an editor like this is things he's picking up on yeah uh, and so i think you you call it labor of love is is um is a very good uh, way to sort of term it, I think, because it clearly is. It clearly means a lot to him, and he's clearly very proud of it as well. Which, you know, yeah, it, it, as well he should be. Yeah. Um, but that that gets to the point before we sort of get into the differences and stuff. Um, do do you think it's a better film than the original cut? Yes. Do you think the the yeah the director's cut is better than the original cut? Tough yes, question. I do. Yes, I do. Now, mm. as, as I said at the start, I adore the original cut and mm. always will. And if this, like you said, this was, this was a sort of a fringe benefit of a horrific COVID situation. So in a parallel universe, this probably would never have come to fruition. We'd still have the original cut. And I'd have been happy with that because I adore mm. it. But when you get a film like this, I do think it's a better version. I just think it's got more depth on it, mm. more more character stuff. You know, some of the supporting characters get more to do. There's more Drago. There's certainly more Apollo. There's certainly more Adrian as well. Mm. Characters that were, um, especially Adrian is, I think, it's very underserved in the theatrical cut. She's just kind of there. Um, yeah. Whereas this adds a bit more depth to her and, and certainly the other um, characters I just mentioned. Even Duke, uh, Apollo's trainer, who then becomes Rocky's trainer, he has a lot more to do in this as well. And I think he's just made it, I hate to use the word contemporary, because it's not a contemporary film. It's a, a film from 1985, which is mm. very much set, which is very much an 80s film. But it just has a bit more, I think you can hang your hat on, if that makes sense. Yeah, there's more meat on the bone, isn't there, really? Oh, yeah, most definitely, yeah, most definitely. Yeah. Um, yeah do you no, think I, it's a better film? I do, actually, yeah. I, I, yeah, I, I totally agree with everything you've said. Um, when, when I first came out, I was on Minanari, because I think, what one of the things to really to really be clear about, I think you, you know, again, you've made a good point about this being con more contemporary is it's still Rocky Four. You know, you don't mm -hmm. lose, there's still the montages, he still he still climbs a mountain and sort of you know shows Drago, and you get all those sort of, <laughs> you know, hearts on fire is in there, and you got all those great songs. But it's very much a different film. 
yeah. w- with a different objective. Um, I think the theatrical cut is designed to be, um, and he, even he said this in sort of the, you know in that Q and A. He said it, and I think in the documentary as well. Like he designed it to be punchy, like it was supposed to be sort of like bam, 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 like constantly, mm. like almost like a Michael Bay thing, you know, that thing of like every, an edit every three seconds kind of thing, you know. Sort of yes, like, yeah. It, it's supposed to be that pacey, um, and it works in that way. Like it is an MTV generation. It's an eighties music video in the form of a uh, a Rocky movie. Hmm. This, this version is way closer to the sort of tone um, and intent of the first three. It, yeah, I agree. It, I agree. Yeah, it leans very much into that drama. And there's some scenes in this, in the new version, that I absolutely adore. That when you watch, you're like, oh, I, I didn't know I needed this, but now I've seen it. Like, like why was this not in the first film? Like, why did they not use this version? Um, but yeah, no, I agree. I think it is a better film. It's a definitely a better version. What? What? Let, let's just start to go through some of those um, variances. There, I mean, from the start, like the opening mm. is very different. Like you know, one of the things, um, and and this one's a little bit more contentious for me because uh, I always kind of loved it. Um, it. It's still there. As again, it's one of those things. It's still there. But is the uh, the, the end. It shows you the end of the previous film, so it shows you the end of Rocky Three. Yes, um, and it's a much sort of like meatier version of that as well, isn't it? It is, yeah, because the original cut starts with Rocky winning the world title back off Club Alang at the end of Rocky Three. Yeah. Whereas this starts with him losing the world title to Club Alang yeah. and getting getting banged out by him, and then you get the bit with him throwing, you know, going to see his statue and throwing his crash helmet at it, and then. Apollo coming to find him in the gym and mm. offering to, to train him up. So it's again, it's it's all stuff from the third film. It's nothing new, but it, I think it what it does is it adds more weight to the Rocky Apollo relationship, doesn't it? Yeah. It establishes it more because I suppose for people who might, you know, maybe haven't seen the original three films that come before this, I can't think why, but you know, <laughs> maybe they have. It it helps establish why, you know, the bond between the two and why Rocky would, you know, feel so responsible for what ultimately happens to Apollo. Mm. If you feel so compelled to go and seek revenge in, in the ring against against Drago. Yeah. So I I don't mind it. I think it I think that bit I'm not sure whether that's the best bit best choice of having so much from the previous film in. But I guess it serves its purpose by sort of establishing where these two men are at, I suppose. It is and it's an interesting yeah because it's clearly there and this is a, this is almost like a rocky it's a rocky uh, conceit that you have to sort of accept. Every sequel has sort of like the last bit of the last film because they are a continuous saga. Like yes, the Rocky story is a Rocky saga. Um, I I sort of like some of this, but again, it's because I've seen the film so often throughout my life. Yeah. There was that thing of like this feels a little bit like previously on Rocky, um, and I was like, I know what this like. I don't need to see this. I know that relationship between. Rocky and Apollo but you are right that it's there for those that probably haven't seen it in a couple of years or or whatever um but in my head you said about the Q&A there was almost in my head like if it would have been great if there was like a 10 minute montage beforehand that was like a a previously on Rocky you know and did that sort of like Mm. a recap of the first three films rather than this um but it does lose one thing that I think is a little sad Okay. Um, but it's, it, it doesn't really lose it because it's still in the third film. One of my favorite scenes is that is after the Club of Lang fight, obviously they've healed a bit, and you get the scene of Rocky and Apollo in the ring. Oh, yes, yeah. Um, and they're sort of like sparring, they're sort of like you know, um, bantering and stuff, and it ends with them sort of, uh, you know, that sort of, uh, you know, are you ready? Ready, it sort of it rings the bell, like ding, ding. And it ends with them both swinging a punch at each other. Yes. Uh, and blends into that awesome sort of like a, a stylistic p- painting. Yeah. Um, and so it was a bit like, oh, man, that, that sort of um, gone. Uh, but that then, in my mind, bleeds into the two boxing gloves coming together. Um, oh, yeah, the American flag and the Russian flag on them, yeah. Yeah, and, and again, so that's gone. And when, when I noticed that was gone, having seen sort of the things that are gone, straight away I was like, oh, okay, I get what, the, what you're doing. You know, this is, a, this is a different tone. 
Um, and I kind of miss those gloves, but I've still, still again, they're still there. I can go back and watch the other version. <laughs> yeah. Um, but from that point on, I think it very much is um, much closer to those original films. Um, but what are your thoughts then about the sort of like the Rocky and Apollo relationship in this sense, sort of like leading up to the Rocky, uh, sorry, leading up to the Apollo and Drago fight? Because like, that, all that's pretty much new, isn't it? Yeah, there's a lot more scenes, aren't there, with Rocky and, and Apollo. Like, there's a scene of them out in Rocky's back garden where they're sort of ruminating over it. And there's a lot more meat to Apollo in this one because in the first one, he's kind of like, oh, who's this Russian guy he thinks he is? You know, I'm going to bang him out, I'm gonna, you know, show him what America's all about. Whereas in this one, they get more under Apollo's skin, don't they? Because he's like, they're kind of saying that, yes, it's a patriotic thing, or, or at least he's he's wrapping up his justification for wanting to fight him in patriotism but really it's about him isn't it mm. it's about him missing that spotlight and and it, and it comes up quite a lot through the film about like the way of the warrior or something like that i think yeah duke's eulogy his funeral alludes to it as well like a warrior has to go out the warrior's way and you know a warrior with no war to fight you know has no purpose so there's kind of that element to it as well isn't there Mm. I, I like that and I like that the fact that they sort of um, it feels much more in, in line with um, Apollo's character that we've got we've come to know yeah because um, a part of Apollo was you know th- th- there's clearly that sort of Muhammad Ali influence isn't there sort of oh yeah definitely um, that idea of sort of like you know the, the, the born athlete and is he, also sort of like you know uh, witty and quick off the mark and all that sort of stuff like you know um i think i always remember sort of um one of my favorite ones i think it's from rocky too is what you see apollo doing an advert it's like um be a thinker not a stinker stay in school um yeah. and there's little little lines like that i think are really cool um and so you've seen that he's quite flashy and he's flamboyant and he you know he, like you say in the first film he came in that he came in the boat and was dressed as george washington and all that other stuff yeah. um and so sort of like, yeah, to have him, to have it be about his need to be seen and this idea of sort of like, you know, this almost sort of yeah, fear of falling into obscurity and being forgotten. Um, it feels much more aligned to Apollo. And the fact he, he is then using this idea of patriotism and the Cold War as an excuse to get back in the limelight, um, I, I like. Um uh, and also, sort of, you know, when you see him get in the ring and he sort of he does all the massive intro and stuff, but he says that thing, and you know, he's getting all riled up. He's like, "Man, I feel born again." You know, it, it makes yeah. sense. It makes a lot more sense in this one. Um, yeah, I completely agree. Yeah, because he, he's a showman, isn't he? That's what he's mm. all about. You know, yes, he was he was the the greatest boxer in the world, and until he came up against Rocky, he'd never lost, and he just sort of I think lost his motivation or whatever in that first fight, and then Rocky somehow beats him in the second fight. Yeah. But, um, you know, he's he's regarded as, like you said, this Muhammad Ali figure, like this greatest of all time. But he has, he's no longer the main man, is he? You know, mm. he's not in the he's not in the mix anymore. And that's what it's all about. And, you know, you get this wonderful scene where Adrian even spells it out to Rocky when, you know, when, when he's obviously been to Rocky's house and, and Adrian's made this comment about, you know, why do you need to fight? I'd, just don't want something to happen to you and then she runs off to the kitchen which is in the theatrical cut but then this mm. version you actually see rocky go and join her in the kitchen and they the two of them have a little conversation about it and she just says look at you know i see apollo for what he is kind of thing you know i, I love the guy he's a wonderful friend to us and i care so much for him but he's doing this for all the wrong reasons you yeah. know um, and and she even says to rocky as well i think she even says to him in that scene this fight won't happen unless you back it, you do know mm. that, don't you? You know, it needs his endorsement as the, the current world heavyweight champion and, and all this. Um, and again, I think that just adds to the layer of Rocky's guilt, doesn't it? Because yeah. he could have stopped, he could have stopped, never mind stopping the physical fight. He could have stopped it from even becoming a fight. He could have talked his friend down. He just tried to do, but obviously he, he can't. <laughs> no, uh, th- that's a really good point that this film really does layer in the fact that like, it's not just about throwing the towel in the ring like there are multiple points throughout this film 
where Rocky could have stopped this fight from happening. Like you say, he could he could do, he could have done more to talk Apollo out of it, mm. and then he, like you say, he could have like proper blocked it with the commission and said no, I want to take on you know, Drago or whatever. Um, and then, yeah. then, like you say, he could have thrown the towel in earlier. Um, uh, and uh, yeah, it, it it really does layer on that fact that like you know you, you now understand a lot more why it's, like Rocky looks back on this and is like no this is Apollo's death is my fault. Yeah. Um, so yeah, no, it, it made me feel a lot more weirdly. Like I say, this this version the this version of the film makes me feel f- makes me feel something different. Right. Um, I have a, a different sort of like emotional reaction to this film rather than sort of like with the original theatrical version when when Apollo is killed, like I'm shocked. You know, you're sort of like you're yeah. shocked because it's so quick. Like he gets to the ring and like you know within a, like I don't know, it's probably less than a couple of minutes. Like Drago's on him and just pounding the crap out of him, and then you get the big, and then he's sort of like you know the he leans into Rocky and he's all bloody. He's like you know don't stop this, yeah. uh, don't you don't stop nothing, and then sort of yeah. um, Drago kills him. And it's sort of the fight is done within sort of like five, six minutes. Um, and all that banter between them, that thing about sort of like, you know, whether this has to happen or sort of the the, the idea of them being uh, warriors out of the spotlight happens literally right before the fight in the dressing room. Um, and there's a thing where sort of like it says, you know, uh, Apollo says, like, you know, if you don't understand it now, you will when this is over. Like you will yeah. when this is over. All that's gone. Because yeah. what they've had is a much more sort of like more I don't want to say serious, but a sort of a much more emotional conversation at Rocky's house. And you've seen how yes. this actually impacts others. Um and so sort of when you go into this, you feel that sort of the weight of what this could be going into that sort of the the exhibition fight more. At least I did. That sort of felt how I felt. Yeah, definitely. There's a more serious tone going into it, isn't it? Because mm. before it's before Rocky didn't Put, put up much objection to Apollo fighting and then it's all very jokey before that and the press conference and then obviously the the uh, James Brown living in America entrance into the ring which we, we do still get yeah and but amazing. like you said this yeah I, 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 I so if they that, that if that had been cut out I'd have walked out <laughs> but I'm so glad it was still and it sounded amazing in in the cinema setting it as really well, didn't did. it? It sounded yeah. huge, uh, as did the entire film. I mean, it, what a treat to see it on the big screen. Um, but yeah, it the the weight of it bears more heavy before that bell's rung. Um, mm. I don't know if that's the benefit of hindsight because you know what's coming, having seen the film a, a literal million times. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the, the, there's there's a clearer sense of something something bad's about to happen. There's been so much laid on before the fight as, as opposed mm. to you know ju- just that bit but i like the fact that they made the fight i mean yeah he still gets absolutely annihilated but in this cut he gets a few more punches in at least doesn't he he, he, he doesn't quite get as completely one-sided in this fight there's a there's a few more apollo th- punches in there even though he's clearly yeah. outmatched well i think he gets like a uh, you know, i think apollo sort of wins the first round doesn't he really like they, they have yeah. it where he's sort of like he's dancing around and he's oh. he's like the you know the apollo we've seen before that sort yeah. of um uh you know doing the jabs doing the jabs you know duck and weave you know um yeah. and all that kind of stuff he's doing his thing and it's not really until the second fight then yeah the, the drago just gets a punch in and just lay like leathers him and then it sort of it starts to turn um, and again, because it's extended, like it gives one of the things that Stallone wanted to do was to give Apollo his due um, yes. in this fight, and it, I think he achieves it. Like Apollo's journey in this, the start of this film, from this thing about you know, the arrogance and being the sort of the warrior mm. um, and wanting to be back in the spotlight, to having this massive pageant, you know, the, the flamboyance coming down on the ball and then sort of like dancing with James <laughs> Dean. And it, it, like you said, it's absolutely fabulous on the on the big screen. Yeah. But it all feels, there's still that sense of like ominous uh, dread. Like, you know, it, it, yeah. again, like maybe it comes with, with meta knowledge because we know what's coming, but it feels a bit more loaded watching this version. Um. And then, like you say, it starts to go well. And when it turns, it, it's that thing of like, oh, shit, the shit just got real. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, no, what, so, you know, do so you like this version of the fight then? 
Yeah, I, 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 th- I just think it, it just makes Apollo look stronger, which mm. is, is how it should be. But at the same time, doesn't make Drago look like any more of a, any less, I should say, of a monster, no. <laughs> which, is, no. which, is what he, which is what he is. Um, they do make Drago, I think, as well in this film, slightly less of a Frankenstein cardboard cutout as well, doesn't he? He has slightly more to say. Mm. And, you know, he, I guess, again, again, I think it's the benefit of hindsight where he, where we've all seen Creed 2 and what becomes of the character in the time between this film and where yeah. you find him in Creed 2 with his son. You know, I think he, it, it's hard to say he's a more sympathetic character in this court because at the end of the day, he kills Apollo <laughs> and and still says that line, if he dies, he dies, which, you know, is, is obviously he didn't mean to kill Apollo in the ring. He, you know, it's no. a boxing match. it was a boxing match in the day. He meant to knock him out and yeah. brutally, brutally beat him and lay down a marker to the world about, you know, what he was, what he could do. He didn't mean to kill him, obviously. But then the fact that he's so unremorseful about it and so... You know, if he dies, he dies, which is an yeah. awful thing to say. But there's other little beats in this film where they just give Drago slightly, slightly more to do, a little bit more dialogue, where it just makes him seem less of a robot, I think. Yeah, I think actually, to me, um, there's two things I want to mention about the fight, and this is one of them, is I actually think they make him more of a villain. Um because in the in the original theatrical cut, like you said, he's very robotic. He's a representation, or he's a sort of like a, a puppet of of the Russian state. You know, he is there as a propaganda machine. Like, you know, he's this perfect Russian right. athlete. And as you as you said, when they give him the more dialogue in this, one of the scenes is at the end of the fight, and I think it's great. They ask him, and he says that sort of thing, like you know, if he dies, he dies, and he has all that dialogue. But there's also this moment where he says about, um, "I will show the world, and the world will know my name." And he's like, "Drago." Yeah. Oh, Drago, yeah. and it's like, <laughs> and then you see that the reaction from his sort of like his boss, like his handler, and yes. his and his wife, uh, Bridget Nielsen, and they're like they're pissed off, and they walk out, and it, it shows that sort of like yeah. there's this arrogance in him, and what I think is really interesting that, uh, that it makes him more human because you you realise at that point that the reason he's doing this. Is exactly the same as Apollo. Yeah. Like, and you know, yeah. and, and so there's this there's this sort of there's this warrior's way. And like you say, so it's not it's it's not that he's not a villain, he still is like you know, Ivan Drago is still a baddie, very much so. But you realize that he's no better or no worse than than uh, Apollo. You know, he's doing this for the celebrity, like he wants to be recognized, he wants his name to be known. So yeah. You know, it sort of makes him sort of the same thing. This idea of this warrior's way and sort of being recognised and adored, um, and I kind of love that. I do. I, I, that that really works for me because uh, it yeah. makes that fight and it makes Apollo's journey sort of more real as well. It's not just him. There's oh, it, even the, even the opposition is is has got that. Um, you know, Drago's got that drive as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, I get that. Yeah, that's a really good point. Yeah. One one other thing that's interesting as well that I noticed in this thing that's that's not been made a, a big deal of, but I think makes a bit of difference is in the theatrical cut, when uh, Apollo's taking his beating and just before he dies, and he, he leans in and says that like, you know, um, don't you do it, and he's all bloody. Yeah. And, and Rocky pauses before throwing the towel in. Yes. It cuts to Duke saying, "Throw in the damn towel," and he gets all yeah, bloody. Yes. <laughs> that's not in the re-edit. The the bit no. Duke Duke is not is removed from the from the thing. He's there at ringside and everything. And yeah. He's all part of that. But this decision to stop the fight is completely down to Rocky. And again, I like the fact that they've removed any other influence. It's just down to this was Rocky's decision. Uh, and again, I think it adds to that thing you were saying about the guilt. Like it, it rests squarely on on uh, Rocky's shoulders. Um, yeah. So yeah, it's just little touches make a lot of difference in this film. Yeah. Um, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It's just it, it's not although it's been so drastically re-edited, the same mm. through storyline is pretty much the same. But they just add these wonderful beats that just give you more to grab hold of, don't they? Yeah. Oh, totally. Like, yeah, every 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 character in this is just a bit more time, but gets more fleshed out. Um, because there's a couple of other scenes that you get a scene with Rocky and the um the boxing federation or the boxing commission. Yes. Um and they're saying like, no, like you cannot fight Drago. Like you know, this we've already lost like Apollo, 
you know, this is ridiculous. Like he's, he's never had a, um, a, a truly professional fight. Like, you know, he's not, we're not putting um, the title on the line. That's ridiculous. Yeah. And, yeah. and he just sort of walks out. And I, quite, I like that scene as well. I do, yeah, because in in the first film, it's the first film, the original version, I should say, when he's he's doing the press conference that announces he's fighting Drago, there's like a, some a montage of paper clippings over it. One of them mm. says Rocky Rocky gives up title to fight, face Drago. So you, you learn that, but it's never mentioned. But you learn that he's he's literally vacated the world title. He's relinquished the world title to allow him to allow him to have this fight. Yes. Yeah. Because he's no longer at the beck and call of the boxing commission. Uh, but it's a great scene, isn't it? With, with yeah. you know, with that room full of the, the boxing commissioners, because it just, you know, Rocky's not even there. Rocky's not even there, like demand making demands as such. He barely speaks, he's so quiet, he's monotone, he's emotionless. You just get this sense of he's completely focus now on what he needs to do you know we've just come from that wonderful funeral scene as well mm. which has so much more in it you get this wonderful eulogy from duke and rocky as well in the i think in the original film he, he says a few lines and puts the belt down on the grave but in this version he properly breaks down in sobbing tears doesn't he yeah yeah which is i would say which is a brave choice because stallone isn't good at, you know the stallone crying isn't good if anyone's ever watched first, <laughs> first blood um yeah <laughs> whilst i love the ending of that film it doesn't always you know unless you really know what's going on like it doesn't kind of play well so yeah. it's a brave choice but it works like it works like you know he says like you, you were my mentor you're my brother like you brought you gave me the opportunity like everything i have i owe to apollo and it sort of hits home you're like yeah you know that it's true you know he was picked at random and given this opportunity and it's sort of like it worked um, so yeah, then the funeral scene is also sort of, uh, but it leads to, like you said, you said about, um, um, Adrian and Adrian have, uh, has a bit of a sort of a through line of this as well. Like, Cause at the funeral, she's the one that says, you know, you, you, this was not your fault. Yeah. You know, like he made his decision. You know, you are not responsible for everything that this guy did. Mm. Um, and, and then obviously it carries on. Uh, but when he does make, you said about this sort of vacates the title and they sort of choose this this fight's going to happen in in, in Russia on uh, December the twenty fifth. <laughs> um, he goes home and that confrontation between uh, Rocky and Adrian on the staircase, yeah, is heartbreaking in this version. <laughs> um, it is, isn't it? But I'm I'm glad though that they put in like um they put in a scene. Because in the original cut, they have, they, like you said, they have this conversation on stairs where she basically says to him, literally says to him, you can't win. Yeah. You know, she thinks he's basically going there to die. And then the next time you see her is when he's leaving to go to the airport and she's just kind of peering out the window. Mm. And he, I always thought, oh, that's a bit cold, that. That's cold for Adrian. Yeah. But whereas in, the, in this version, you get this little scene where after he said goodbye to his son, she comes up to Rocky in the bedroom and literally grabs hold of him, crying, saying, please, I don't want you. She begs him not to go, mm. doesn't she? Crying. And he comes up with that line about, I've never asked you to stop being a woman, so please don't ask me to stop being a man, which yeah. I think he, he used in one of the earlier films as well. Um, but I like that because it just, it makes, a, it redeems Adrian in my eyes because I always thought that was a really cold thing of her to do, to not, to say that to him. And then you, as an audience member, you led, you think there was no reconciliation between mm. them until the point she turns up in Russia midway through the training and then, the, you know, they're back together. But I always thought that was really cold of her. But I, I do like the fact that they've made her seem more of a, a loving, supporting wife at least, you know? Yeah, no, I, I, I always think this, that... Um... You know, because everyone talks about sort of like, you know, when we're talking about Sylvester Stallone, we're talking about Carl Weathers, you know, sort of like there as, as Apollo and Rocky, the big sort of like Dolph Lundgren. Yeah, the, the, the presence of Talia Shire in all of these films um, cannot be understated. Yeah. Um, her Adrian is so essential to why Rocky works. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I kind of love sort of like Rocky and Adrian together as a, as a, as a couple, a, a like, you know, what do they call it? Like a relationship goals. Like, you know, sort of, <laughs> they, they seem like a legit couple that, you know, they have like little jokes with each other and, and they, they're clearly, you know, there's a clear chemistry between, you know, between them and it's, it's, um, it's, it remains loving and it's, 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 
it feels touching. So when you have those breakdown moments, um, you know, it, it feels tough. Um, and and that, that, that scene on the, like I say, on the staircase, but like you say, the woman she comes to him and sort of like, you know, she really is begging him. It, it is quite difficult uh, to watch. Like, you know, she's very good again. Um, she's a wonderful actress, Talia Shire. She yeah, really is. She really was excellent. And, and, um, I'd but just go back to that sort of thing on the on the staircase because again it's one of the scenes I think Stallone spent a lot of time re-editing because he, he, he it's longer it's much yeah. longer and again it has this conversation of sort of like you know you know about why has he done it like you know what has he considered the consequences and it's, she she still says the line like you cannot you can't win mm. and it, but instead that was the end of the last one but like that it's not the end of this one he sort of, he says a bit more and then they just sort of like there's this lingering moment of just them, them like looking at each other when you sort of know, yeah, this is an impasse, like, you know, yeah. um, and, and, and it goes into the sort of um, no way out montage, which again is re-edited. <laughs> um, great, great song. I um, love that song. Um, I always thought it was, it's a turning point for me in this film because that's when, like after that, then it sort of becomes, uh, you get like turning, you get, you get no way out, burning heart, you know, so on and so forth, and sort of um, it, it get all the songs from that point. But yeah, no, it, it, it comes again with this weightiness that him going to Russia, that you know, um, that ominous dread that was sort of like lingering in the beginning, in the lead up to the Apollo uh, Drago fight, is just ramped up in the second half because of these sort of these moments at the funeral and this this confrontation and then you said as you said that final begging scene where she's like you know don't go um it really does add some weight again to his decision to fly to russia and to take on drago um yeah oh definitely yeah yeah especially because we've 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 seen what drago can do in the ring now as well so we've seen that he's you know he's a he's a literal killing machine in the ring so yeah. again it just it just adding those bits to it just helps to stack the deck against Rocky and make it seem like even more of an impossible task that he's about to take on. Mm. You know, he's about to, you know, go into the literal lion's den against this guy who's, who's a lot younger than him and about a foot taller than him. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. like, you know, scientifically enhanced to be this yeah. sort of perfect fighter who hits harder than any other fighter and, you know, it is 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 literally unstoppable, but um, it is great because it, it it just makes what comes later all the more sweeter. I think, doesn't it? It does. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, um, and you know, very very little has sort of changed. There's been tweaks, there's editing tweaks, but very little has changed. Sort of with the the second half. Once they hit Russia, um, you know, like you say, it, it, it's all those same beats, um, and there's just some minor sort of edits really. I think even some of the montages have got slightly different or some of the edits in the montages are slightly different. Um, yeah, there is there's some little bits of scene scenes in the in the in the training sequences that I'd mm. never seen before. Little bits and bobs but nothing major. No. I suppose the, the 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 biggest scene of that sort of whole sequence is when he's just landed in Russia and they have this whole conversation with the Russian handlers, don't they? And um, they're asking when are the sparring partners going to turn mm. up? And, and they're like, oh, there is no sparring partners. You know, I, I don't know anything about sparring partners because I always did wonder why he never actually did in this whole training camp, he's doing all this stuff to toughen him up and doing these Herculean feats of weightlifting and, and yeah insane sit-ups and things like this i always wonder why he does actually very little boxing training <laughs> in, in the montages i was so well, you know why is he not in there working on his boxing uh but obviously this explains why yeah it does because again like you said because in the montage you see that drago is drago has like you know you see him knocking uh a couple yeah. of sparring partners to the ground uh, but yeah it makes a point like you know um and it's poorly doesn't it, it says sort of like you know uh, when the spy when the spy partners go, and sort of the, like the Russian says, like you know, I'm, don't what you're talking about. We would, you know, everything you've asked for is here. Yeah. Um, and it does. It adds to that line of sort of like what Rocky says. He says, "Don't need him anymore." Like it's not. Mm. Um, it shows like he's just just focused on this one thing, like through in, in his grief. Like he doesn't want to punch anyone else other than Drago. Like that's all. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I suppose that the training's more about. I suppose he's at that point he's the world heavyweight champion, so he knows how to box. I suppose yeah. the training the training is all about conditioning and, and 
putting himself at the absolute peak of his fitness and be toughening himself up and all the rest of it so he can mm. take the punishment that we all know he's going to take in the fight because he takes so much. It's untrue. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> I guess it's, you know, it's about, it's about getting tougher, isn't it? I suppose, rather than working on your boxing skills. Cause you, if you're the world champion, your skills should already be on point, I guess. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, as you say, it makes him tough. Like, as you say, it's, uh, and it's, it's, it's related to, or it's highlighted by um, Drago later on is in, in a great line. It's in the, in both cuts, which is, you know, he's not human. He's a piece, he's like a piece of iron. <laughs> yeah. Um, which is, which is great. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, the montage is great. The music is still fantastic, and you know, one of my favorite that the training montage, uh, the music is awesome. Uh, you know, with him running up the mountain top and all that sort of stuff. It's still, you know, it, um, I don't know about you, but like when I was in, in, in all this bit, from this bit, and all through the fight, the screening I was in um, was relatively busy. Um, mm. In fact, I had a bit of a, I had a bit of a thing. The one I went to was cancelled. Because the, the to, because the projector had broken, really? and my replacement one I'd gone to, uh, or they, they they offered me had like one seat left, and it was the largest <laughs> cinema in, um, in the Tamworth. This is this was in in the Tamworth Odeon Locks, and it was their really? largest screen they'd put it in, and there was one seat left. Wow! And I was like, I don't know, I'll go to another one. It's fine. So and I did. Um, luckily near home, and that's a, it's a much smaller cinema, but it was still really busy. So this thing did business. Uh, when I went to see it, but when I was watching it, the moment the montage started, like it was predominantly blokes. By the way, I think it was like there like, must be like forty people in there. And I think there was one woman, and even then, I think her, I think her <laughs> yeah. husband had lied to her about what they were going to go see. <laughs> um, but it was clear that my audience was well into this. At like, the moment that sort of like um, uh, burning heart starts and that sort of thing, like. Um, people in my screening were, 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 were quite into this what about yours what about the screen where you were it, it was about half full i would say mm. um so it wasn't packed but the cinema i go to is never busy which is kind of strange um but yeah it i mean it, let's face it, it was a captive audience wasn't mm. it you know you, you you're not going to get people going oh, i've never heard of rocky four i'll uh, i'll give that a go <laughs> everyone knows what rocky four is so they know what they're going to get before they've been to see it um because I guess they already have seen it in, mm. in, in its ori- in its original format. So then, like you said, there was not many um, females in that <laughs> in that auditorium. Everyone had a Y chromosome. I think <laughs> uh, there might have been a couple of ladies in there, like you said, dra- dra- dragged along by their uh, the husbands or, or boyfriends or whatever. Um, but yeah, it, it you could feel the atmosphere in the room mm-hmm. lift when yeah. we got to that point. Yeah, because you can't help but be swept along on the euphoria of it. You know, just, I defy anyone to not sit in a, in a cinema screen with perfect booming sound, big HD screen, all the rest of it, all the bells and whistles and see Sly Stallone, <laughs> Sly Stallone <laughs> do these training montages of it where he's absolutely ripped to shreds. He looks yeah. a million dollars and he's just doing these insane exercises you know some of the and it's all him doing it as well let's face it it's not he's not got some like um stunt double, body, yeah. stunt double or body double yeah. doing these upside down sit-ups or those that crazy thing where he's on the bench on his oh, back his shoulders. Sort of, yeah, he lifts he lifts his he lifts his legs straight <laughs> points his legs straight out and, and sort of holds them at a 45 degree angle yeah while uh while duke's going no pain no pain yeah. um it is just i if anyone doesn't want to just punch the air when that happens, then you, you, you're dead inside as far as I'm concerned. You, you've you given up on life. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, you, the atmosphere definitely sort of went up a notch then for yeah. that. Like you said, as soon as it hits Russia and it is just one big, you know, macho fest then for half an hour, isn't it? <laughs> just testosterone thrown at the screen. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, no, so uh, it was. It was a really good atmosphere. So when, when we're coming into the the... Uh, that that last fight, the the, the big fight, uh, and again this is a little anecdote. So the, I was sat next to a, a couple of seats away, but there was a guy sat next near me, and we'd had a chat before. And, and there's a moment I was I was just sort of like I was watching it, and I looked over because I was looking around the audience. I like to sort of to see how people reacted. And there's a moment as they walk into the ring, and Paulie sort of has that speech. You know, he sort of says to him sort of like you know, um, about he admits like you know, yeah, I'm a bit of a loser, I'm a bum, but you kept me around, you showed me respect. 
Um, you know, you're a good guy, Rocky. If I could mm. unzip myself and step out and be anybody else, I'd want to be you. Yes. It feels like half, it feels a bit silly, but like you know, um, Paul he's given it his all. Like the guy sitting next to me was like, I swear there was a like glistening in his eyes. Like the dude was getting welled up, and um, it, sh- it just goes to show me like how important or how much like this film means to people. You know, yeah. it gets like you said, it has been critically panned at times, and people joke about it being the silly one, but like it clearly means something to people. For, you know, and these characters do as well. So. Um, I just thought that was interesting. Um, it does, though, doesn't it? I mean, you know, let's face it, Rocky's been around since 1975. Yeah. And, you know, and Creed 2 was, what, three, four years ago, something mm. like that? So he's been around for 40-something years. And, yeah. you know, maybe we'll, maybe we'll see him again, maybe we won't, who knows. Um, but the character just in Jaws, like you said, it, it, he, he is literally just a massive part of popular culture yeah. everybody knows who rocky is even if you even if you've never seen any of the, the six films or i guess eight films if you include the two creeds even if you've never seen a single frame of them everyone knows who rocky is don't they mm. everyone recognizes the um gonna fly now music everyone recognizes yeah. the tiger and everyone knows what it's from even if you've never seen it it's just so ingrained in popular culture and yeah like you said it's you do you you almost do get a sort of lump in the throat when he's he's coming to the ring with Paulie because Paulie is a, a a knob really at the end of the yes. day isn't he, he he's really a, is. and, uh, yeah. yeah and he's actually one of the characters who's who's probably underserved by this new cut because you get a lot less Paulie I guess because mm. they cut they cut the robot out <laughs> which means a lot no <laughs> robot means a lot less Paulie so he he actually says next to nothing in this film but mm. they kept that bit they kept that bit in and I'm so glad they did because it's just this wonderful moment that Rocky Rocky Balboa is like this dangerous man in the ring he is like you know he's a beast in the ring he's a he's a mm. little animal in the ring but outside the ring he's anything but he's a wonderful person he's a soft generous yeah. good-hearted wonderful guy so I love that because it just shows that there's a there's a human being but then there's also after Paulie says that there's this guy who's going to actually go in there and tear apart this this inhuman monster. It's brilliant. Yeah, like, like, literally going to war. Yeah, um, yeah, and, and obviously that brings us to the sort of the final fight. And uh, again, it's it's been re-edited a slightly. It's still it still very much hits those beats. You know, the song bells is in there and it does all the bits and pieces. It's got the slow mo with the the freeze frames and all that kind of stuff, which I love. It's all really well done. Um, and it is still great. It's still a really well choreographed fight. Um, it is. It is. I can't. Again, I defy anyone not to just be just to, to love it. It's incredibly unrealistic at the end of the day. It is because you know in, in boxing matches you don't block punches with your head. You know, yeah. I'm, I, 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 you know, I've never stepped in a box ring, but I like to think if I did, I'd sort of not just sort of want to block someone's incoming fist with my face or the top of my head like Rocky does in this fight. Mm. Um, and also the number of times Rocky gets knocked down in this fight means it would have been stopped. Yeah. It wouldn't have it wouldn't have gone to the 15th of final yeah. round for him, to, for him to knock Drago out because it would have been stopped. Yeah. Um, you know, both guys are, are completely busted up by the end anyway, but it, it, I just, I could watch that fight over and over and over again. Oh, and, and I have, like the official version, like, it's, it's, yeah. <laughs> As you, as you say, sort of like, you know, it's not just knocked to the ground. In some cases, it's, it's like blasted across the ring. Like, you know, it's, yeah. Um, yeah. But I, I, again, the choreography in this fight, uh, and again, like I say, I do recommend anybody what, who, what, uh, and again, Max, if you get a chance to go back and watch the, the YouTube documentary, because there's yes. a moment towards the end of that when he does talk about it, like they're editing the fight, they actually go through some bits and pieces. And he talks about like why they chose certain angles and why they sort of like you know he says like the 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 camera is never in the ring unless it's like an absolute extreme close up like you know yeah. you never get like mid shots within the ring it's all uh, extreme close ups or outside the ring. Yeah. He says they wanted to have that you know uh, separation, um, and he talks about the fact that like, they're not really hitting each other you know they're sort of like you know they they are making contact in on several occasions and obviously there's the oh, story yeah. of how. Dolph Lundgren um, bruised Rocket uh, Sylvester Stallone's heart um, <laughs> with a punch. Did you not know that? I, I've heard that he got busted up in the fight. Yeah, I didn't know he had a. Bru- I didn't know he had a bruised heart. Though. He tells the story in, in the documentary. So he, yeah, oh. he, they, it, it was. I think it was like day three. Like, no, they've been doing like, it for like ten days because this was the first thing they did. This was the first thing they did was the final fight, and they were 
yes. after that. And um, yeah, he said at one point he got hit so hard in the sternum, he sort of, they left the ring, he thought he, was, he felt ill, but he said he thought he was fine. They got, he got home to the hospital, uh, to the hotel, and then like, he was feeling really bad. And he was in intensive care for two, three days <laughs> with a, a bruised heart. Jesus Christ. That's what you call suffering for your heart, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, apparently, like, Dolph was really upset and was just like, you know, uh, really sorry, like, you know, don't fire me. Um, so, uh, yeah, uh, you know, crazy. Uh, and as you say, suffering for his heart, like, you know, that final fight, as you said, I, I, you know, it's interesting that people talk about sort of fight choreography and sort of um, they talk about, you know, action movies and, and sort of um, superhero films and all this other stuff, martial arts films. And I don't think like the Rocky films get enough credit for the, some of the boxing, mm. some of the boxing choreography. And I think this is incredibly good. This one, um, but yeah, it is. It, it's incredibly lifting. They changed. There is there is a bit of a change though to the ending of this, which is really interesting. Um, the, the couple of things is firstly, like in the theatrical version, obviously they have the kid back home. They have his son back home with some of his friends being babysat by a robot. I'm so, <laughs> yes. so so clearly that's why that's gone. Like so, yeah. can't we want the robot to get rid of all that? Which I'm glad about anyway, because obviously he mentions his son, and they've cut that from the the end speech. Um, but the other thing that's interesting is in the in the in the theatrical cut, like the crowd gets all behind Rocky, don't they? Sort of like you know the crowd yeah. sort of starts, they stop chanting Drago and they start chanting Rocky, and um, and you have like the Politburo and it's Gorbachev. Um, yes. sat at the top um, and in the theatrical cut at the end of it like he stands up and applauds and he sort of joins the sort of thing and it's, it's this idea of like you know if you if we can change and you know and you can change everybody can change yeah and it's supposed to be even the even like, you know rocky is even brought around even brought around but like, the russian government of, of now sort of like you know sort of clapping for an american um and i've always thought that was really cheesy but in this one they don't and I like the fact that in this one, they get up and storm out. And it's quite clear from the look that Gorbachev gives, or at least one thing from Gorbachev's chiefs gives um, Drago's handler, sort of like, you may not see the morning. <laughs> like, um, that reaction uh, of them storming out. Yeah. And, and obviously, because Drago sort of kicked off and sort of said, like, you know, yeah, some, yeah, in that sort of, like, I fight for myself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now makes a lot more sense when you watch Creed 2. Yes. Um, it does, doesn't it? Yeah, in terms of mm. where, how the how he was treated just for losing that fight and what became of his life. Mm. Yeah, like, you know, it now makes a lot more sense why his wife left him straight away and everything else that happened is because, like, yeah, the Politburo, the government turned their back on him at the end of that fight. Um, yeah. So, you know, I could imagine that, like, in Creed 2, there's a great scene where, like, a... Um, Drago turns up at uh, Rocky's restaurant, Adrian's, and they have this conversation. And he says, "Like, no, I lost everything overnight." And you know, you yeah. say that, don't you? That's sort of like a, a bit of a thing. But I can completely imagine that that's exactly what happened. Like the day after this fight, like he could be in hospital or whatever. And like, no, we've stripped your rank. Um, you know, you're no longer representing this country. You're a disgrace. You know, everything's gone. Like the next day, I'm pretty sure that's exactly what happened. Um, and then his wife would have left him and so on and so forth. So I completely get it. Like, it, this film makes me feel go, oh, okay. Like, you know, like Drago may be more arrogant and, and, and you know, wants the limelight, which is now what we're seeing. But like him wanting to do that is actually dangerous in, yeah. in the world he works and lives in. Um, I don't know what you, if you have any thoughts on that. Yeah. I, I, you know, I didn't really sort of thought that much about it but yeah i completely agree with what you're saying yeah it's it's an interesting it was all sort of jingoistic at the end of the original wasn't it like you yeah. said with the the russians sort of siding with bell ball which which never would have happened anyway <laughs> in real life it's it's absurd um but yeah it, it kind of makes more sense for it and it ties in and make becomes more uh, can is it what's what I'm thinking of? Can canon canonical mm. can canonical? How we, yeah. canonical? That's it. Forgive my pronunciation. Yeah. Um, with like we said, with how it becomes for Creed too. So it's more consistent mm. um, that they, he would have been treated like that. And there's a wonderful humanizing moment for Drago. Uh, again, a new bit at the end of the fight is the the original film ends with Rocky sort of you know 
saying happy Christmas to his kid and, and down the television set and then he's celebrating the ring. But here we see Balboa and his entourage leave the ring. Mm. And as he's leaving the ring, he goes past Drago and they touch gloves, don't they? Yes. They, they touch gloves. Balboa goes to him and, and touches his glove as a mark of respect for a, 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 an amazing fight, which definitely wouldn't have happened in the original. So again, that's just that interesting beat there. And Drago doesn't sort of, look offended or take exception to the fact that Rocky touching loves it. He seems quite willing to do it. Mm. Um, and I really like that touch as well. It just makes, it brings the fight back down to a more human level, doesn't it? I, I yeah, hundred percent agree. I think I look, you know, the original ending has him sort of been like hoisted in the air, doesn't it? With the American flag and you yes. know, doing all that sort of thing, holding yeah. that up. And it's all like you say, very jingoistic and very patriotic. And that's the final frame. That's the bit that the, um, yeah. Rocky Four ends on the original, yeah. But with this one, that's all gone. Like there's a bit that the flag, so he's got the flag draped over him, and he gives the speech. But then when he leaves the ring, he's wearing the Balboa, um, uh, I was going to say dressing gown, but like you know the the ring robe. Yeah. Um, and it's it, yeah, it has him walking past, and I, I do like that moment. Um, like you say, where they touch gloves, and it is that acknowledgement of our, our beef is over. You know, like you know, the, yeah. you you fought and I fought, and it's over and done with. Um, at least for then, you know, sort of like thirty years of bitterness can can change someone's opinions. But um, it's uh, yeah, no, I do. I like that moment, and it ends like I say. The freeze frame in this one is then um, them walking backstage, and it sort of freezes on them walking out, which is great. Um, yeah, it makes it not less of a political maneuver that the end of the original film was with him saying about how we can all change and yeah the russians adore adore him and it's about you know uh, uh, american soviet relations in the mid 80s <laughs> yeah. and all the rest of it here it breaks it back down to it's two men fighting in a ring at the end of the day mm. you know Bal balboa is not fighting for his country here he's not fighting for america no he's not he's fighting for the to honor his his fallen comp his fallen friend he's not fighting for his country he's not out there representing america on the international stage he, that's what it's obviously drago's re very much representing russia yeah. but Balboa was not there to be mr america he's there to go and knock out the guy who killed his friend so i yeah. like that it breaks it back down to this is two fighters in a ring it's not it's not political power it's not the american government against the Russian government. It's none of that. It's, it's just two better, men fighting. Say, it's yeah. better. There's two guys trying to kill each other in. You know, there's two guys trying to kill each other in the ring. But that's better than four million out there. Um, you know, and it, it sort of says that, but it's still it's about this personal grudge at the end of the day. Like that whole political thing feels tacked on, and so I like yeah. the fact that they minimise it and it it ends on that note. Um, but ending on that note also feels like it blends better with Rocky Five as well. And that's not going to say it makes Rocky Five a better film. <laughs> Um, but Rocky Five starts with him backstage, doesn't it? It starts with him and he's in the shower and he's, his hands are shaking and stuff. Um, yeah. And it feels that the, the tone is much more of a continual piece because, again, like you know, if you know you've got meta knowledge, but you know that yes, this this fight, you know, he won this fight, but it comes at a cost. Um, and so, yeah, it sort of it, again, it feels like it blends better with that film. Um, yeah. I do, yeah. Sure. It's again, it's just more, it's more human. It, the entire yeah. film is like that, you know. The, the film is more human, it's less, it's less bombastic than the original. Yes, it, much it's, it's a great you description. Know, yeah, yeah. You, you made a brilliant point earlier where you said it's very much MT, MTV generation. This kind of film, it's like a music video writ large, you know, extended mm. to 90 minutes. Whereas this just Yes, it's still got all that. Of course, yeah. it has. He's not Sly's not reinventing the wheel here, let's be clear. But it just get the whole film from start to finish, and like that very end there with the two fighters, it's more humanistic. It's mm. it's slightly more grounded, I think, than the original cut, and is all the better for it, in my opinion. At least, no, no, I agree, hundred percent. It's interesting to say that you know, we, I think you and I um, have uh, enjoyed the Rocky saga, um, you know, oh, yeah. from from Rocky to Creed two, and um, uh, you know, th this is an it's a new it's not a new entry. It's a, it's a a reimagining of an existing entry, and it just provides something more. And I'm 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 so sort of grateful that Stallone was able to do this and was given this opportunity because it really does it breathes new life into this film and gives you an alternative take that I think fits better into the to the canon um, 
of everything. So, um, and it's interesting. Like I said we both came out liking it. I think I think those audiences that, that I saw. I don't think I saw anybody complaining when I was leaving. So, no, um, no, I, I I don't see how anybody would. I I I'd, I'd really like to find someone who prefers the original cut and and have them explain to me why mm-hmm. I mean, again again it's not there's nothing wrong with that it's again it's it's art it's all subjective there's no right or wrong way to to view something everyone can like what they like mm-hmm. but I'd, I'd really like to see why someone wouldn't prefer this cut to the original why yeah. they'd long why they'd long for the stuff that was in the original that's no longer in this at the expense of the stuff we've been treated to in this new version i really don't see how and why it's people wouldn't see this as a much better cut of the film no i agree totally agree it's, it's clearly a much better film and it, you know as you said it um watching this on the big screen for you know big sort of hd screen big speakers was a fantastic experience opened with a q a that lasted 20 25 minutes which was really cool um and uh, yeah, I'm I'm glad I was able to experience this um, on on the big screen. It's big screen. I think you know for any Rocky fan that didn't get to see it, I'm really sorry. It's amazing. Um, and just off air, we were saying sort of like you know the hope, the dream, and I'm I'm hope you know I can't believe they wouldn't. This gets a physical special edition release. Um, yeah, you know there's loads to be done on here. Seeing comparisons, both versions of the film, you know, two discs, both versions, the theatrical cut and the, the director's cut and uh, screen comparisons, that 90 minute documentary from YouTube, all kinds of bits and pieces. Let's stick it on there. Get it on there, MGM, which is now owned by Amazon. So maybe not. We'll see. Yeah. Um, There's no reason for them not to. There's money to mm. be made. And you don't leave money on the table if you're a, a successful uh, enterprise like Amazon is, you know. Well, you don't... Stallone even says that, doesn't he? Like when he was talking about it, I think it was in the Q&A, like he says... You know, yeah, he says when you when you're young, you don't realize how much money you've left on the table. So clearly it's in his head, because he obviously will make money off it as well. Yeah. Um, he must be going like, no, why why are you not releasing this? <laughs> physical exactly. Media? Exactly. I'm sure they will. I mean, it's on Amazon now to to buy digitally in HD. So it's mm-hmm. it is available for home viewing now. But I, I am sure in the new year there'll be a, a Blu-ray and a 4K disc release. Yeah. And like, like you said, there's there's money to be made. There's a fan, it, and it, let's not forget as well. The cinema release was very limited, wasn't it? We were quite it was lucky. Fathom it, it, was show, it was showing where we live, and it was only on for a week and only limited showing. So a mm. lot of people just physically wouldn't have had the chance to go, who perhaps did want to go. So you know, I'm sure there's a, there's a, and at the end of the day, Rocky's one of the biggest and most successful film franchises out there. Anyway, it's got a fan base, so I'm sure we'll get it. Yes, we have to. We have to, Scott. Do, yes, I'm hoping. Fingers crossed. In yeah. the new year, as you say, we'll hopefully get an announcement. But yes, anyway, so that was that's Rocky versus Drago. I think you know. Any final thoughts, Max, before we sort of uh, before we sign out? I'm just very grateful it exists. I'm so mm. happy that I got to see it. I mean, it, even if they'd have just re-released the original cut uh, in the cinemas for for some random reason, I would have gone to see that just for the treat of being able yeah. to see it on the big screen. But just to see this version and sly with the benefit of 30 or 35 36 years hindsight and wisdom and experience being able to look at it with a more objective eye and see what needed improving see what needed taking out putting this extra treasure in that just enhances the film so much i'm just really grateful it exists really grateful and i just it's one i'll watch and watch over again i can't see now scott me ever if providing it does get a physical release, yeah. If, when I want to watch Rocky Four, me going back to the original cut of this, I think for this for me now will be the version of the film I watch. I think I think I agree. No, I think you're right. I think um, I have thought about this because I was like, oh, okay, you know, if it was like you said that extended edition where like this had gone to two hours, you know, you said, oh, I've yeah. decided in an extra 40 minutes it went to two hour film or whatever i'd probably be like yeah do you know what i'm probably gonna go back and just watch the theatrical cut because it's got that punchiness it's got that pace but no this is still this is still 90 something minutes 94 minutes i think and it's still got a great punchy sort of pace it's still really good it's just just a better film so yeah no i agree i think this is now my in canon this is the the rocky four that i follow uh, as we go through the saga um 
So, I th- yeah, I think you're right. I think I'll be going to this one going forward. So, even more reason that this needs a physical release. Because, <laughs> um, you know, it needs, it needs to become in canon. Um, anyway, okay, you know, thank you, Max. I really appreciate you coming on to talk about um, about this. I'm so glad we both got to see it. Um, it's been a, a great conversation. Thank you for having me, Scott. Yeah, it's been a blast. Thank you. Yeah. And as always, let's get that pop in. Uh, Max, where can people find you and what do you got going on? Uh, yeah, you can find me on Twitter at Maxi Byrne, which is spelled M-A-X-Y-B-Y-R-N-E. Uh, if you go there, there's links to the various websites. I write bits and pieces for comic book reviews, articles, that kind of thing. And then there's also a link to the Comics in Motion podcast uh, network page, which is on Twitter at Comics in Motion P, uh, where my podcast show, Mandatory Marvel and DC, can be found amongst a absolute litany of wonderful shows on that feed. It's available on all the podcasting capturing apps, whatever your app of choice is, it's on there. And there's loads of varied content by some wonderful folks. So by all means, do check that out. Yes, indeed do. Comics in Motion is an absolute, it's a, it's a glut of pleasure, that network. <laughs> and I'll tell you what, day in, day out, I'm often behind, unfortunately, because there's so much. Yeah, but... Me too. It's uh, it's got some fantastic stuff. I always enjoy it. Uh, so as always, there'll be links below for you to find out those things. But uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for listening along. And if you enjoyed this show, don't forget to leave a review. We appreciate all of our uh, listeners leaving review, four star, five stars, whatever you want to leave, uh, just on whatever podcast catcher you use. Uh, but more importantly, we have got a Patreon. That's www.patreon.com/slash. 20CG Media. That's 20th Century Geek Media. So that's slash 20CG Media. And on there, we've got a whole wealth of podcasts. We've got uh, a weekly trekking through the Twilight Zone. Me and Julian Darius giving our thoughts on the uh, the very early episodes, the classic episodes of the Twilight Zone. Uh, my monthly 30 minute thoughts and uh, Creator Corner, which recently I spoke with the voice of Janine Melnitz. Uh, Laura Summer from the Real Ghostbusters that'll be on in December so go check those out all kinds of different bits and pieces but uh, from now Max thank you very much Uh, really appreciate you coming on Uh, and ladies and gentlemen thank you very much and we'll talk again soon Mm -hmm.